It is such an honor to be speaking here this evening. It is truly wonderful to see so many gathered here in the embrace of our very own community. This candlelight vigil is a remembrance of others, so many others. Our candles soon to be lit, bright and flaming, yet small and all too extinguishable. We'll burn on this evening with many emotions. There is sadness and grief at the loss we feel, so shocking in its tragedy, so great in its numbers, and so gripping in its connection to each of us. For many of us, there's the awakened sense of personal vulnerability that the violent hate crimes against transgender individuals that we see in the news can become a terror we experience in our own personal lives. Coming together to honor those lost so tragically and senselessly in our community is sobering, sad, yet heartwarming. Perhaps the most tragic are those we have lost to suicide, like my dear friend, Karina Page. There is great courage in the new generation of trans youth who are paving the way for this journey, so that they and others may not endure the discrimination, the hate crimes, and the self-hate that many other transgender individuals have suffered. As an advocate for the transgender community, mentor for trans youth and families across the nation, and a transgender woman myself, this is a time of needing to be able to reach out and to do something. Some of you know that I navigated my journey clear throughout high school, stealth. Each year, I have participated in Transgender Advocacy Day at our state capitol under the protective wing of the Transgender Law Center. Most recently, I agreed to share my personal story with Katie Couric in the hopes of educating the public about transgender youth. We are who we are, and we must live our authentic lives. Speaking out oftentimes has its repercussions for those of us who have been advocates over the years. And some of us here tonight have personally paid for this by the loss of employment, loss of career, loss of a loved one or family, and loss of hope. But those of us who spoke out for what we believe in and who refuse to take no for an answer, we have made many milestones in our justice system and in public awareness. <coughs> We passed the Gender Non-Discrimination Act so that we are legally protected from losing our jobs simply for being our true, authentic selves. We passed the Vital Statistics Act so that our legal documents match our true identities. And most recently, the School Success and Opportunity Act so that our transgender youth have the right to participate fully and succeed in school with all other students. We did not give up. We stood for what we believed in, we were heard and we made history. Today, right now, we can give this personal vow and tribute to those whose lives were so cruelly cut short. Today, we can decide not to live in fear, for tomorrow holds the promise of living in a world of compassion and acceptance for all. Today, we can choose, in the light of what our candles mean, to take another's hand, lift another's burden, or simply acknowledge another's worth. We can enjoy the voices of our friends, the warmth of their handshake, and the comfort of their embrace. We can truly treasure another day with our families and our loved ones. And we can choose to keep the memory of the flaming candles we will hold before us as a solemn reminder of what it is that we aim for together, live for together, and struggle for together within our community. Thank you for joining me tonight in honoring our precious brothers and sisters whom we have lost. 